Hello and welcome to Flory Models Friday Roundup Show. Here we are with you on the 11th of September. Getting near Christmas now, <laughs> 2020, after a very busy week. Obviously last week um, we didn't do any live shows or streaming and things like that, purely because we were doing a lot of work behind the scenes. But obviously you still got all the reviews and the full video builds went up as normal. It's just that it needed a little bit of time to catch up because obviously we're preparing for things like Brexit and all the stuff like that. End of year things as well, which need to be done. And unfortunately we were running out of time for all of this. So we needed a bit of breathing space. Hence we took that off. Anyway, this week we've been back at it as normal as we're making our way through. So just to cap up this week, as you can see, We've been very busy down in here. So it all started with the MRAP. We'll have a closer look at this in a minute, as you can see. But this was uh, part uh, eight, uh, which basically talks about the engine. We were working on the engine with this one, as you can see, finishing off the chassis, going through. We did a little bit of uh, detailed work. So we went through, did some hand painting. We use uh, Posca pens, which or Posca pens, which I absolutely love. I use them for almost everything these days. They are very, very good. Okay, for doing detailed work, we mounted up the engine, started to do the weathering on the internals, and then obviously weathering, oil washes, and dry brushing, such like, with the engine mounted uh, into the actual bodywork like that. Again, it's one of those ones, it's coming together, we'll have a look properly uh, at the end of the show on this one, but it is that thing, there's so much detail in this kit, it is probably more detailed, I would say, than some of the armour that I've done, which have been fully, you know, internal and external details and aftermarket we've used. This literally seems to be every nut and bolt is on this kit. I've literally just started working on the turret. The gun itself is made up of, I don't know, 20, 30 pieces, just for the, the 50 cal on the roof uh, and stuff like that, let alone all the armored stuff and everything that goes around it. So that's like a model on its own, but I have to say, been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. It's coming together very nicely now, but anyway, it's one of those where light is at the end of the tunnel on that one. Uh, on Tuesday, we were getting a little bit back to normal. So we say we covered, obviously, on this build as we're making our way through. And obviously, it was Q&A day as well. So I was answering, obviously, all your questions. We had some great ones about uh, natural metal finishes and painted finishes on P51s, so forth and so on, on all your usual questions. So if you want to go off and see that one, it's about an hour long. That one is up with you right now. Uh, on Wednesday, it was me and Matt show. Uh, Matt showing off some of the deliveries that we had into the PM store. Obviously, the PM show is all about kits uh, and tools and things like that that as you can imagine on that one so me and Matt tend to record that on Wednesday afternoons if you've got questions for us please make sure they're to them before one o'clock and then we can answer them on that particular show but obviously we were talking about what's coming this week obviously kit releases manufacturers in general and all the usual gossip that goes along with it and as you can see as Matt was showing in the show there I've had some of these turn up for me as well so we've got the long awaited Lancaster no section and I intend to probably review that today I'll get it edited and everything over the weekend and it'll be up with you on Monday so it's nice to see that this particular one is finally in here and I'm amazed how small the box is I don't know why I had this feeling it was deeper and bigger but actually it's not it's just a, a normal one but it's just the no section really interesting thing and again I think you know we can't help feel it was stolen by wingnut wings on this one but obviously it was that one where wingnut wings no longer available we're never going to see that Lancaster I don't think we will so it's nice to actually have another option from it so if you haven't got the room to build a 30 second scale Lancaster and let's face it it is about that big it is an absolute monster now you can do the no section which is about this big and let's face it 90% of all the interesting detail and everything else is in this section so it's great to be able to see that one so anyway we'll be obviously having a good look at it the review might even build it later on next year so it might be one of those ones that I'll keep in the old stash and I'll be getting that one done shortly afterwards I will get this one done as well as you know I am a complete Phantom fanatic um, I've loved the Phantom it's a great aircraft but we've always had a little bit of a problem with the long nose ones i.e. Hasegawa was your option and that's not you know face it Hasegawa was actually a really nice kit but unfortunately it's sort of showing its age now and it'd be nice if one of the other major two and I obviously think of Academy's Phantoms because they're quite nice but for the top tier one then you're going to actually go with the Sukumori, a long nose phantom absolutely gorgeous and so we've got the Japanese one coming along we can only hope we'll see some other versions of them coming along as well on this one so apparently they are but it'd be quite interesting to see when they do come along anyway I'll do a review of that one full review and everything with you next week again probably see that one I'm going to build that one as well a couple for my own personal stash on here and again this one turned up for me 
So this little one, as I say, I did the review of it. Those ones actually aren't, aren't my kits, um, but as I said, I fell in love with it. And again, I know I bash Kitty Hawk. That's only because I love them. Well, I love their subjects. And uh, so this is my entry or will be for a full video build on this one as well next year. So when we do the Naval SIG, this is one of the ones I'm gonna do for it. Hopefully we do the Zero and this one together. So that would be it, but really, really nice. And the marking options uh, are absolutely stunning. Fantastic job on that one as well. And again, you can get aftermarket decals from Kitty Hawk themselves so you can just buy decals as standalone as well I've been noticing those have been coming down the line recently some amazing paint jobs and artwork done on those ones so it's really nice to see that so anyway all kits all general things like that obviously you can catch up with that one last night we had our big announcement so Andy this one here this lovely gentleman is actually our first full-time member of staff uh, at PM Models at the Doncaster store um, obviously me and Matt co-own that uh, between us and uh, to be honest it's just exploded this year has been really really busy for us uh, and we can't cope so we've actually taken on our first full-time member of staff which is Andy which let's face it he's been doing it part-time anyway uh, but he is full-time so we had a bit of an announcement on last night's show as it came along with that we have got lots of things happening um, there's various things going to be happening obviously with pm stores the big one obviously is taking andy on we've got bringing in new lines uh completely brand new lines to us that we haven't done before we've got those lined up for starting to come in in the new year as well and we intend to expand the company again and you think the company's only been going three years now and we've gone from nothing to what we've got now and in theory we're at growing the unit you know and that's a what five six thousand square foot unit and we're almost out of room on that one so uh yes things are growing things are getting bigger various things are happening obviously with flooring models as well we've got big things happening next uh, year as well biggest one obviously that all uh, international sales to uh, USA and Canada are going to now be through high altitude hobbies come 1st of January you'll be able to get from them I think it makes perfect sense because one we all know Brett he's a really nice guy he's a member of Flory Models and a lot of you know him from the internet anyway he owns a model store he knows what he's on about he knows great service and things like that so obviously he'll be getting those products out to you direct which basically means it'll be half the price it costs for to get them from me direct so you're saving yourself some money and hopefully you're saving yourself a lot of time as well so he can ship it within a few days right the way around the US but as we know it's taking three to four weeks at the moment from UK stuff to get in through the system through customs and then out to you guys uh, in the USA so from next year January the 1st you'll be no a, we're no longer able to buy off of the Floyd model site if you're in the USA or Canada it's all going to go through him rest of the world is then going to be handled by PM stores so PM stores are going to take over the sales side of things as well and they're going to be doing obviously the rest of the world that obviously Brett doesn't do UK stuff will still come through me just for a few months just so PM can get itself up on its feet and get going because it is quite a lot of orders to be honest um, and then hopefully what we're going to do in the next few months the entire entire sales side of Flory models will then be under PM and PM models will handle the absolute lot on that one so that's the plan so we've got some big changes what that means for me is I get my old job back. I'm no longer doing sales and things like that. I can actually do this uh, and I can do more building work. I can do more review work. We can do a lot more sort of training stuff, a lot more tutorials, a lot more live stuff uh, and things like that as well. So hopefully it's a win-win situation. I free up a lot of stuff by giving it over to the actual PM side of things and then they can sort of run with it and develop it and they can move it along. Andy's going to work on the website, make it a lot more you know easier to use and stuff like that. I'll take the best bits and use them on the Flory model site as well. Uh, and then hopefully it's going to be a win-win all the way around and hopefully you guys are the ones that are going to get the benefit from all of this because again it just frees me up for time for doing what I enjoy doing and get back to building instead of doing sales side of it and orders and all those types of things like that. So lots of good stuff to come on that one. Anyway, uh, moving us over, we have been working on this little lady and just to bring you bang up to speed with it, we've got, uh, where's the camera? Hold on, there's a the camera. We need a camera. There's a camera. So there we go. We are literally to this. So it's all together now. This is one lump now. It's all been put in. So as you can see, we've got the actual cab fitted up onto the top and we're making our way through with that one. It's looking absolutely fantastic. We've got the engine. To be honest, I've just painted up the bonnet, which is, as you can probably see, you know, testimony to Hataka Paints. It's gorgeous finish. Uh, and it just on here like this. Unfortunately, it's a bit too nice a finish. So we're going to have to weather it into be with the rest of it because the other one, it was very high pressure coat. This one I did quite normal pressures and things like that but as you can see it is coming along very nicely and to be honest just before we came on air we started to work on the wheel so we can just mock this up a little bit so there we go she's starting to really come together now really look the part 
as it comes in. We've still got, to be honest, a hell of a lot to go on with this one. Um, we've obviously got a lot of internals still to go. We've got the gun deck, everything, stuff around the back, and then we've got to weather the entire thing. And we're gonna go with pigments and all that good stuff. As soon as that's done, I'm actually handing it off to Matt, and then Matt's gonna do some figures for it, and we're gonna do a little diorama. So we have a diorama with it, with some stuff. I've got some pelican cases. We're gonna make some barricades and various things to set it in a little bit of a thing. So I'm doing the model. Matt's gonna do all the figure painting and the stuff that goes along with this one. So I'm not sure if this will have the crew in it or how it's gonna work and all the rest of it. I'm leaving that in his capable hands, but hopefully by next week it will be done and then it can be handed off for him and then he can work on it as we make our way through. There's still probably gonna be, I reckon, another four or five parts at least to this particular one. At the moment, as you can see on here, we have uh, part 10. Uh, where is it? I've lost it here somewhere. Hold on, where is it? There it is. We've got part 10, which is up with you literally right now. So part 10 really covers putting all the photo etch and all the stuff onto it literally like that. There's all those photo etch parts in there. That's that uh, internal cab. I've got all the radio gear is all internal now. It's all been put in and all the fire extinguishers and all the other small details there inside this now and all ready to go. Okay, and then obviously we're working on the rear deck. So we're putting in the rear deck there. We've got the underguard with the V-hull system and obviously got photo etch chains and things like that go onto it. Very, very nicely detailed as it makes its way through. And then you end up with something looking literally just like that so again one of those ones where i was beginning to lose faith in the build shall we say because it seems to be dragging on and going on so up to the part 10 now so that's five well it's more over five hours of footage to watch if you wanted to sit down and watch it but it's well worth it because the detail is absolutely fantastic on these ones let's make our way through one thing that came up yesterday um we wanted to speak about was these um, now the reason we're talking about these, and I just flick over a nice camera angle, as you can see here. Um, it came up last night that some of you have got like a snapped off tip on the end of it. Uh, and then we've had loads of people saying, but mine's not even sharp, it's blunt. Don't forget, these are not sharp. You know, you can hack yourself to bits on these. They're not supposed to cut you. <laughs> Blood, no it's not. Okay, they're not supposed to be sharp. It is literally a 90 degree type of bend on these things. The whole point to it is, is that they're actually for scrape cleaning. So we've done these videos on it, but you can just come along and as I say, you pull off wispy bits, literally like this. So you don't want it to be sharp. If it's sharp, what happens is, you're physically gonna cut in. But with these ones, you can come along and you can take off little bits of swath and tiny little bits of raised things. So we did it with Buster and things like that, of going through the motions of like scrape cleaning on here. We've shown it many, many times and that. So if yours isn't sharp, it's not supposed to be. It's not one of these, okay? This is, as you can see here, actually a carving tool. This, there's no way I would put it across my skin. It's lethal. The trouble that it is, if you, like there, you can't scrape clean with it. You can drag it, uh, but as you can probably hear it's very scrapey but if you push away it just yeah it just rips and it digs yet with these ones you can push away and pull so you can pull towards you or you can push away and it will go in sort of both directions with it all right so that's the point don't think that these should be sharp i think everyone's getting a little bit confused between a deburring tool which is technically just a, a 90 degree angle okay and it doesn't it's not sharp at all and a carving tool a carving tool the whole point of it is here if you wanted to you can get in and you can literally take out chunks Okay, literally just like that, all right? These ones don't do that, but it's not an option with it. You need a proper carving tool. These are designed literally for just smoothing out. So if you have thinking, where's the blade? I've got one, it's duff, they haven't milled it. It's nothing to do with that, it's the wrong thing. You need one of these, a carving tool, rather than a deburring tool or a scrape cleaner. I call them a deburring tool, but technically, you know, the thing is it's a scrape cleaner at the end of the day. So just make sure you've got the right fit tool that you're after. If you want one of these, obviously a totally different one, uh, and you can go along like that. But obviously the big thing is, you can just literally put it across your skin and it's not gonna slice you open, where obviously there's no way on earth I would ever try it with that, because I'll be down in casualty. And I'm sure my other half would be well chuffed to see you come through the door. So yes, anyway, just to clear that one up with you on there. And that 
is about it. Now, talking of tools and things like that, next week I've got loads for you. So Tool Tuesday is gonna be back with a vengeance because Matt's been sending me down all these tools, and to be honest, I've got a pile of them over there. So we've got the actual punch set with the domed ones as well for doing dome rivets. I've got two types of cutters, side cutters. So I'm gonna be putting up against my, you know, what I call expensive ones. So God's hands and my cheap ones as well. So we can have a look at those. So we said, we've got these ones as well, which is master tools. Technically, it's a photo etch blades, but you get holders with it. So we can put these together. We've got those coming up. So lots of stuff on there. Obviously, we've got these reviews, plus I've got some other bits and pieces coming in as well. So we're going to do reviews on that. So really busy next week. And then obviously, you'll be pushing on very heavily with the MRAP. I'm not sure if there'll be a part up on Monday. It might be the actual review is up for your Monday. But obviously, this is then going to poke through quite quickly. So there may be two or three parts going up one after the other, or I might double them up and do double episodes and stuff like that as we make our way through. I really want to get that one done, preferably before sort of Thursday, Friday next week, because I want to get on with the Star Trek one, and that's going to be a bit of a run to the line. But as I say, we can do that overwards. Christmas closing, lots of you have been asking about that and those types of things as well. Christmas closing literally is non-existent here at Flory Models. You, we're going to do a live show with you on Christmas Eve, which would be lovely to have you along. I know we've got all next week, but the week after, and then we're going to have a little bit of a break, obviously, between Christmas and New Year, but we're planning on having an auction on the Wednesday between Christmas and New Year as well. So there'll be a little bit of a live auction, and we will be around, as you know, and all the rest of it. So orders will just still go out all the time from both companies, from myself and Pierre Models they'll just filter through and go through. No one's planning on having a mass shutdown for three weeks or anything else like that. Let's face it, I think a lot of people have been shutting enough. So it'd be nice to somewhat get back to normal as we make our way through. Anyway, as always on a Friday, I'm going to leave, your, uh, leave you with your great work from the gallery. Some stunning ones in there. It's a bit longer because obviously it's two weeks combined as we made our way through. So till Monday, everybody, happy modelling. Take care. Fade.